now I have with me Lori Webb from Copenhagen, Denmark. Lori, how are you? I'm very fine. Thank you very much, Amit, for having me. Uh, would you go ahead and tell us your X, Y, and Z, as I, I call them? Well, actually, my X, Y, Z is, just to, to clarify, um, I'm here with you today from Copenhagen, Denmark, but originally I'm from New York, uh, so I'm American, and thus my lack of a Danish accent. Uh, so <laughs> Imagine my are... surprise, the first word I, I heard from you, I was like, hey, she sounds good. I, I was expecting a rough interview, you know, sometime when you have someone from, from Europe. Go ahead. All right, so um, I am actually the author of a book called Entrepreneurial Profiles Around the World and Down the Street. And as a spin-off of that book, because the book is delayed and coming out until the spring of 2012, I've been working on it for four years, have interviewed, uh, done video interviews with 200 entrepreneurs from around the world. So I've been very busy, but it's kind of like a baby, yeah. and it comes when it's ready to come. You can't decide. <laughs> so as a spin-off project, I decided to do a series based on these interviews, and the series is the Entrepreneurial Profiles series and the first book I'm happy to say went to a number two bestseller for new releases in small business and entrepreneurship and it's called Exceptional Experience What the World's Most Famous Former Madam Can Teach You About Business, yes. Customer Service, yes. Employee Relations yes. and Entrepreneurship. So I, it's a long title. I gotta tell you I, I get the request from you for an interview, and if you've been following me anywhere on the web, you know I'm like the no censorship guy. And I go, oh no, I got to interview this. And But then you sent me the book, and I listened to it. Oh my God, it's not what you think, is it? No, no, and that's the the funny thing is is the, the for those of you who have never heard of like why is she talking about a madam and. Uh, I shared a little bit of this with Amid prior to uh, going on, going live with this, and that's that um, I have been out of the country for many, many years, and I've done a lot of things I, in my life. So some of my high school friends were writing me and saying, "Lori, did you, did you ever work as a madam? I mean, we know you've done everything else." And I said, "No, that's not me. I interviewed someone who was a madam, and the person that I interviewed, sorry." It's the Mayflower uh, Madam. Yes, the Mayflower Madam. She's very famous, um, Sydney Biddle Barrows. And what happened was that Sydney, when she was shut down in, you know, by NYPD, it became such a huge story that she was asked to write a book. So she wrote the Mayflower Madam. Uh, Candace Bergen actually played her in a movie called the Mayflower Madam. Sydney's book went to New York Times bestseller. It was picked up by Harvard Business School uh, on the, the teaching list. Yeah. Uh, Forbes wrote it as uh, being one of the best business books of the year. So, you know, funny, the things that you can learn from the world's oldest profession. Uh, <laughs> when you do it well and when you take the lessons outside of what the context is, that's why I was so fascinated to do the interview with Sydney and to, to write the book and, and put my 100 lessons at the end of the book because I thought, for people who might be a little bit nervous about it, then they can see, well, what does this have to do with me? Maybe they thought it was interesting, a little bit titillating, but but there's just very, very sound business advice for anybody, no matter what your business is. Well, you know what I took? You, you sent me the book to re read, and I gotten through quite a bit of what you sent me. And I'll, I'll tell you what I took away from it. If I'm starting a business, and I want to have information that honestly is current, really current. I mean, this person was before Facebook, before Google, before Twitter, but she was doing things that Facebook, Google, and Twitter are thriving to get us to do. And and there was kind of this, you could tell, like a non-censorship. We kind of second guess ourselves a lot. The lawyer always tells us, do this and do that. And we don't come out very sincere. This person is sincere. She had really good business knowledge. If you get a chance to tell her, tell her I was blown away. So I definitely recommend the book as a read, but we're not just going to talk about the book, are we? No, I guess not. <laughs> we can talk about the book, but there's so, I mean, we have lots of things that we can talk about. The, so. the book we're going we're gonna to talk about, well, I'm going to talk about the entire package. The book is a, 
uh, is is being offered for a really good value and TV show how uh, customers know we're going to give them a special for watching. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But I want you to tell me a little bit about, and you sort of spoke a little bit about it, but more of the struggle. Why did you decide to do this series? Okay, well, it kickstarted. Um, I have been working in entrepreneurship. I actually have a background in many things. I've worked in, yeah, I have a degree in theater, I have a degree in information technology. So it's kind of a, a span there. And I worked retail. I worked retail at Macy's New York. I was a, a a manager there and worked with a spree. I did visual merchandising. I did you know consulting. I worked in radio. I did all these different things. And what I found was from doing all the different things that I did and also living in I in the different countries that I've lived in. I've lived in France. I lived in Paris for a little while. I lived in London for a little while in England and have been in Copenhagen for most of my almost 49 years. So uh, I think that diversity feel that I've always had, also being simply, you know, an African American in the United States, you get a feeling of of the diversity or, you know, just how things are different from a different perspective. And I found that a lot of times we weren't, we weren't seeing that in the entrepreneurial space. The the books that were getting Produce were at one point, and I, I must say that the times are starting to catch up now, but I was looking for a book that I couldn't find, and that was a book that represented people who looked like me or who were not multimillionaires writing and telling you about the struggles they had 10 years ago, but people who were in it right now, who were doing it, who no one has ever heard of. Uh, people from Africa, people from Israel, people from Palestine, people from you know, Singapore, people from Syria, people from United States, people from Canada, you name it. They're in, you know, I interviewed somebody from there. Yeah. And what is amazing is um, that I, I just believe in the entrepreneurial spirit so much. And and that's where we're very similar. You, you know, I found out you were doing the show and your aim is to to engage that spirit and do good for the world. And that's kind of what my, my idea was, that I thought that there should be something that gave a voice, a platform that gave a voice to the missing, the missing stories in entrepreneurship. People forget, uh, apparently, people, anybody who lives in a city is connected to entrepreneurs all the time. You jump in a taxi. The taxi driver that is driving you around might have a PhD, from his home country. Uh, she may have a surgeon's license from her home country, but she's making things work in the country that she's in. And I, from doing these interviews, actually one of the books in the, in the series is an outline of things that I've discovered about entrepreneurship. The groups of entrepreneurs, um, I would say, are divided in uh, based on soul. If you understand how I'm going to say this, it's going to be I'm kind of going to wait to see how you put that. It's the together. soul, but it's also soul for people start entrepreneurial in, uh, endeavors. And when I say endeavors, I don't mean necessarily small businesses. Uh, I believe that the entrepreneurial spirit can live in a school, it can live in a church, it can live in a mosque, it can live in a you know wherever. It's for me, it's creativity with legs. And I'm, the difference between someone just having a good idea, but someone who puts legs to it and puts action into it and does something, often with a financial element to it, but not necessarily. It could be a bigger cause. So it's also being a messenger. Incredible. So I think that that um, when I did these interviews, I was finding some of the answers. I asked three questions of all the entrepreneurs that I that I interviewed, and the last three questions were: What's the best thing about being an entrepreneur? What's the most challenging thing about being an entrepreneur? And what are your words of wisdom about entrepreneurship? And from that, along with their stories and the research that I did, the soul was that entrepreneurs started because for survival reasons, and often that, that's the S for soul. And the survival reasons were rooted often around being an expat or being an immigrant or being a rebel or being somebody who just didn't fit into society. Then you had the O, which were the observers. And the observers are your inventors. They're the people who see something, or marketers. Somebody who sees something in the marketplace or sees a lack of something in the marketplace and 
decide that it's their job to bring it to market. Then you have your people who are the use, and they are the, the people with an unstoppable desire. These are often your creatives. These are your messengers. These are your people that they simply can't stop. They're obsessed. They can't stop doing something. Maybe you, you know, take pictures or you play the guitar and you simply figure out, well, I want to do this all day long. So I burn for this. This is my passion. I'm going to figure out how to get paid for it or be able to do it long, you know, more of it. And then finally, L for legacy. And those are often your activists, your, your nonprofits, your people who, or, or you, I mean, People who want to leave a legacy, who, who want to leave something for the generations beyond us, or who want to make a, a big splash in the world. Well, you know what? So, I, I'm, I'm amazed. You're on. You're spot on. I've been an entrepreneur my entire life. I was 17, uh, 16 when I arrived in America. Uh, the S, people ask me. I actually have a video on this, so I'm just like not making this stuff up. In the video, it says... We start businesses, you know, I, I urge government to not go in and pick on little businesses because when a sign guy shows up at your store, all you think is government. I ran away from government and here is government again. And, and why we started these businesses is because no one hired us. Okay, we're an expat. You know, we'll start the business, hope to God it sticks. If it doesn't, we got to start the next one. The, the inventor, I... You know, you codge a bunch of technology together, and before you know it, you have your own technology. This TV show how fits the inventor component. I made it up. My wife and I, we laugh. That I'm going to be filthy rich, not because I set out to make money. It's because I was trying to put all my friends into a marketing sphere where their message can go out there. And then I realized, oh, my God, we're all going to make a huge impact and 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 leave an incredible legacy and it, it, mine is world peace it's not an arrogance thing it's just it's time has come and someone has to stand up and say i'm going to lead the charge and i'm going to be one of the messengers that says we're going to make peace happen it's up to me before i can turn around and say Lori, help me i have to decide i'm going to make world peace okay i don't really care what the differences are there's no differences between us we're all beautiful we're all children of God. If you don't believe in God, we're all children of whatever created you, okay? But we're here. We're beautiful. Let's get along together. Quit fighting for the finite resources. So I, I told you in the beginning of the interview, I feel like I'm listening to myself in the mirror just with a female voice. <laughs> I, lo I love this. This is great. So I'm going to I'm gonna try not to make the interview much longer by exposing. But the soul thing was fabulous. I love it. So thanks. A taste of things to come. That's going to be in the in the kind of primer for the entrepreneurial pro, uh, profiles book. Well, you know what i I've never I've never um, um, eloquated it as well as you did. But obviously, interviewing so many people, you would get that. Now, one of the things you can share with me, uh, I'm only on interview number fourteen or fifteen, and the incredible learning I'm getting is off the chart. It's 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 actually crazy, and and here's the funny thing is for for people who are like us out there, and this is the call this is the call to action. So pay attention. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Start talking to people. Speak to experts in your field. Yeah. Speak to experts in other fields. Yeah. You know, as you're growing your knowledge and you're sharing your knowledge, that's that's how this works. This is how we will all benefit. The whole world will benefit because if if more of us did what we love to do, yeah. that would give us so much more re, you know, more resources and happy to 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 be happy. Yeah. To to be with our families in a way but, that we're not if way. we are going to a job and hate it and then come home and your boss calls you up and tells you you have to work overtime and your you know your loved ones are yeah. waiting for you yeah. i'm not saying that that doesn't happen when you're an entrepreneur and if my kids were around they'd be like mm. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a balance thing yeah. but but i think there's a difference with at the end of the day while you get busy and you do things and it demands work it's a tough job there's a difference between doing a tough job because you love to do it, because it's your decision to do it. Yeah. And someone 
who's telling you what to do, especially if you don't believe that they know what they're doing, especially if you <laughs> don't believe there's a lot of that, that. <laughs> there's a, too much of that. And that's what I found from doing the interviews yeah. is that, you know, we all have our ideas of, you know, well, you know, I think that. And sometimes we think that we're smarter than other people. And sometimes we think that we're not smarter than other people. Yeah. But what it does is the more people you speak to, then you get more of a, a, a voice, a, a, a kind of, perspective. Uh, and, and that gives you, it makes you um, stronger in terms of your own decision. Like, okay, when you are countered with your own opinion, then that makes you more resolute to be, if you if you really feel strongly about it, then you just keep going, yeah. or you listen and say, okay, well maybe there's some some wisdom here that I can get from the way. There's a lot of people saying this. Maybe I should pay attention to what they're saying. Yeah. yeah. But it works both ways. I don't agree just because everybody says everybody's doing it doesn't make it right because right. we've seen historical demolition happen because everybody's doing it. Yeah. Um, but also not to be just contrarian and and do something just to be going the other way. Yeah. So I think that by talking to all these people and talking to them at different levels yeah. and talking at them from different fields, when when you start to hear over and over again, what's the best thing about being, being an entrepreneur? And a Michael Gerber tells you it's, it's following your passion. Uh, when a, a, a give, you know, a, Masati Sato in, in uh, Singapore, who has Buy One, Give One, which is a transaction based giving uh, nonprofit. And she says, It's following your passion. When you find a Brian Traum in, in Copenhagen who has an eco lifestyle store and he says, It's following your passion, well, you start to go, Wait a minute, there's something about that following your passion. Even if you, I mean, if you didn't know it for yourself. But yeah, yeah. I think what I'm trying to do with, with, with the work that I'm doing and the book and and the products and the services that I offer is I'm trying I'm not trying to tell people what's right I'm I'm giving a perspective yeah. uh, you can as you can see in the book um, the ex that I did with Sydney uh, the interview that I did with Sydney it's the first part of it is kind of you know it's just laying the story out yeah. it's just an interview that I'm doing with Sydney so people can listen to the questions that I ask or people can see the questions that I ask. They can see the question, the the answers that Sydney gave. Just kind of journalistic. Yeah, yeah. And then the end is my hundred lessons learned from that interview, which gives my own perspective. So it's more editorial. So I give both flavors yeah. to kind of guide people, but ultimately they can read it. They can look at mine. Then they can draw what they want out of it, yeah. and they can use that and go forward. Well, the, That's the, my hope. I, I, you know what? I, I'm speechless. <laughs> I, you're ahead of me by a mile, and and I can only learn. And I'm hoping this is, you know, I, I, I'm a spiritual person. I believe in God, and I believe He keeps putting people in my way to further my trip. And I feel I have 500 to 700 people in my immediate author sphere that are freshly minted authors and they're all wanting to learn how to go to the next step and I'm going how can I give them a hand of how to do it correctly I'm improvising quite a bit I'm using what I know in some areas but you are going to be a resource we're all going to lean on you I hope you won't get mad at, as people will be over skyping you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you very much. That is very, very kind of you. I, I, um, I'm not going to ask you why people won't buy your book because normally I say, what's the largest objection to buying your book? We're going to have it for, in a minute, 99 cents. So that's not, I'm going to ask you, why do you think people have, what do they have as the biggest objection for not starting a business? Oh, this is really horrible English. What is the biggest <laughs> objection to starting a business? Okay. Um, in my experience, uh, it's a lot of people don't start a business because of, let's let's do a little bit of myth busters. People think it's more secure to have a job. They think that there's job security. You have in, you have insurance. You have all of these things because we have we have grown up, in, especially in the states, um, from the time when I was there. We grew up in that industrial age where 
we get, you know, we almost forgot that the whole premise of the United States is entrepreneurial spirit, people. Amen. Come on. Amen. Um, and I, I think that's the case in you? any country. I want you to sure. see if you could read this. Can you read that on the screen? If it is to be, if it is to be, it is up to me. And then I'll read Entrepreneurs, it. entrepreneur has 12 letters. Nine of them are in American. American only has eight letters. Missing three, P-U-T. We are tasked in putting the entrepreneurial back in America by Amid Youssef. This is the back of my business card. I like that. Oh, send that to me. You should put I, that up on the quote. I will. The point being is you're tapping the nail on the head. When I came here, it was still entrepreneurial. Now it's almost anti-starting a business. The corporation has convinced all these little buffoons in the cities to go and make rules all over the place that now when you try to put up a sign, there's 10 people coming down and telling you, don't put up a sign. Why? Because it aesthetically doesn't look good. No, it's the big ass corporation trying to block the little guy from starting. Okay. And, and they're using you, you idiot that everybody pays taxes for to fight entrepreneurship instead of helping it. And, and if I was to say the number one hindrance is right now small local city government. But yeah. go ahead. The the lack of security well, I, or or the real security. Oh, I'm sorry. Now we're both. Uh, I know, I know, I know. I could talk to you like for six hours. I want to try to keep this to half an hour. <laughs> okay. Well, I think that there's a lot of like. I think mainly it is the mindset. But taking if if we take it out of the United States and and go international, I think it's it's something I've taught entrepreneurship in in Norway and in Denmark, in Holland, in England, and, you know, the United States. So I've, I've been around and met a lot of different people also outside of even the book. Thousands of entrepreneurs I've been connected with. And I think that one of the problems is the education of entrepreneurs has historically existed in business. This is another thing that I'm coming with, and that's entrepreneurship for me is, a, is an art. It should be, it's actually something um, that, sh that, that is so relevant to whatever, it, because as I said earlier about the creativity uh, with legs, then it doesn't matter uh, if you have a business degree. Actually, to be honest with you, I'm not saying that you don't need business skills, but at the beginning, it is, it is creation, and creation is art. And when people connect, whether you're an English major or you're a bio major, all of that, actually, entrepreneurship should be a base course in every, it should be, you know, actually along with um, marriage or relationship skills or raising children, those should be integrated in, like, from, from when we're really we children at this point. You wonder why the divorce rate is what it is, or people have such trouble with relationships, but we never learn. We never learn how to do it. Yeah. We watch TV, and on TV, the when I was younger anyway, the woman got mad, a man said something, he threw the water in his face. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. And, and, you, and you don't did do crazy that. stuff. Yeah. If you did that in real life, someone would knock you down. Well, I, <laughs> Why would I'm, you do that? I'm... Uh... I'm going to go on a limb because I really believe that when TV show how authenticity comes out and the audience and when, and we're going to get copied. The only thing I got going for me is speed to market. This baby was born 34 days ago, 33 days ago before. And there's something about the number 33 in Christianity, as you know, but 33 days ago before New Year's, the idea was born. And when, when it was born, I ran down like an idiot screaming, I got it, I got it, I got it. Because my whole life meant something all of a sudden. And it's this television network, but at first it was a TV station. And I thought, how could I make it so people aren't jealous of me? Well, what about if I teach them to make a TV station? And then I thought, wait, 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 wait. How about if I teach them to make their own network? How about a network that spawns networks? Oh my God. Wait a minute. If we have all this fabulous content, who's going to watch that crappy attention deficit disorder TV anymore? I mean, do you realize television does everything in four-second increments? You, you worked in it. You know that. 
okay camera one camera two camera three camera one camera two camera three and i'm like no wonder we all got ad what adhd i think they call it attention deficit yes. whatever yeah. so anyway yeah. i'm rambling on oh, god i yes. could I, I could go on with you i love this subject i want to tell our audience the special you're running for them and and really Ladies, gentlemen, you had better be planning to come visit her channel. It's going to be called Lori Webb on TV Show How. Lori Webb, the TV Show How dash, the TV Show How dot com forward slash Lori Webb. And she's going to have a... L-O-R-I-W-E-B-B. Uh, I didn't think it was spelled with a Y, but I guess L-O-R-I-W-E-B. Well, I guess because I... Yeah. I live over here, so sometimes people with my name, but yeah, L-O-R-I. No. It's short a one. simple spelling. It should not be spellable problem, but L-O-R-I, Web, W-E-B-B, um, is going to be her channel. What are we going to do for our audience today? And I know you're going to run this sale through, but I'm going to lean on you a little bit. If someone goes to Amazon and they find it for the regular price after today, which they will, because huh? by the time I get it edited, it's going to, the 99 cents is going to, well, I gave away the price. You're going to give it to us at a special price. I'll keep it for you guys. As my friend, the author, I'll lean on them a little bit. Can we provide them a copy through back channel if they find this and, de and don't get it for 99 Yes, I'll be able to I give them something. You're I'm, I'm going to so be offering also some follow-up things with the book. Yes. Um, I'm going to be doing some interviews. I've spoken to Sydney since yeah. the book came out, and we might even be doing a, a webinar together yeah. uh, to do some. I'm going to coach some people through the the hundred lessons, so how you can use that. So we do if that. Amid if Amid gives the word, then you are in for a special deal. Okay, I thank you very much. You know what, guys? These are not rehearsed. These are my <laughs> real friends, and. We think the space that we're in is so peaceful that we want you in. I mean, yes, you're going to get hooked. These, these shows are real. These are people I've hugged, I've laughed, I've, I've chatted with for six months to a year. They've been to events with me. We've squeezed the bejeebers out of each other. You should be at these events. They're so much fun. But we're trying to bring this feeling to the world. The world is a happy place. 2012 is a really unique year. It's the year the good workers are going to win. And we are the good workers, and we want you on board. Okay, thank you. I love you for that. Um, the scarcity I talked about, which is it's going away, but as long as you call us, you order it through TV Show How, it's going to be $0.99 cents as a favor. Thank you. And we are working, just so you know, that um, it is going to be coming out on, right now it's just on the tr on the Kindle, but it is going to be coming out as an audio and also as a uh, print on demand. So, you know what? I, I would love to get the audio when it comes out because because I want to hear it. And I'm presuming your voice? Yes. Oh, yes. You know, because the author writes something and then some other person reads their work and I'm like, it doesn't sound like that author, you know? And... and um, I want you to tell me about two people that you think you've helped. Uh, and by the way, I've been all over the chart on my questions. I feel bad because there's just so much I want to cover with you. Oh, that's okay. And, and I'm we've, cool. We've gone <laughs> long, and, and I don't want it to be too long that people don't stick around. So would you promise to come back another time? Sure. Okay. Sure. It would be my pleasure. I would I, love to do that. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, too. And you'll be doing your own interviews, and you'll be placing your interviews at TV Show How, and we're going to put them behind the gate where they can see so much, and then, you know, if they want to participate with you. This is how you make your living. So, guys, the authors are coming directly to you. There is no middle person. TV Show How and the author are the only people participating in the money. You keep us in business. I thank you for that. Testimonials, two people that you think you've helped. Uh, just, um, just well, specifics in which two people from in connection with the book or in general? In in entrepreneurial <laughs> sphere. Oh, well, I would hope that there's been more than two people. I have <laughs> five really great reviews on Amazon.com about the book, and right. I have uh, two on Amazon.co.uk, yeah. and in LinkedIn I have six testimonials from people that I've spoken with, but I think one of my favorites was, um, actually, uh, I did a radio here in Copenhagen. It's called The Voice. It was It's the biggest uh, radio station that's not state-owned at the time when I, when I started. And so we're going 20 years back, a former colleague of mine, and we reconnected through all this, you know, Facebook and LinkedIn and everything, 
and I was I started something called Entrepreneurial Cafe um, a few years ago, and I was actually showing up at cafes and um, doing free. Just, I would spend the whole day, uh, and I would just offer my knowledge. So you would just come in off the fly, get a cup of coffee, and sit down if you had if you more if it wasn't booked. And and this particular uh, former colleague of mine came and sat down, and he needed some stuff. He was setting up something. He wanted to do an event. He's a coach. He wanted to set up an event, and he didn't know. And I was like, you didn't you don't have it on LinkedIn? You don't have it on it? You don't. Have Wait, and you don't have an account? And he he wrote the most stunning LinkedIn testimony of all time. But it was funny because he he said, "Oh my gosh!" He said, "You weren't kidding when you said thorough branding. You were you just in an hour went through everything." So I I believe that I thoroughly helped him, Great. and that was a that was that warmed the cockles of my heart. Yeah. And I work in some different masterminding groups over over time, and I have. Um, one of the women who is in one of the groups, um, she hit a, a hard, a rough patch and was really, really struggling. And so we were just brainstorming about, you know, how could she get some, infuse some money into her business right now? This, you know, what can we do? What can I do? Well, I have a research background, so I just went to her. She was in, in the Midwest, and I just went to Chamber of Commerce, and I was looking up things for her. I'd sent her a four-page list of contact them, go to this society, try to think about how can you connect with your community because sometimes we're so confused about the new media and I live, I mean, I reside in cyberspace actually more than Copenhagen or uh, the states at this point. Yeah. But the reality is it's kind of what you talk about. It's the community. It's, it's, we're going local now. We're, we're so global that we're, we're, we have to also go hyper-local. And don't miss out on the opportunities to connect with the clubs in your area or don't miss out on the opportunities to serve your community because people forget that. And, the, and even newspapers or magazines and things, people are forgetting that they can actually connect with, with those opportunities to promote or present or serve their communities. And, and that's something that I think is useful for everybody, and and I was able to help her see that she had she, you know, she wrote back and she sent me a very very nice touching um, letter, and I hope that you know it's it's going to turn around for her. But. Okay, now I'm gonna I know this is where I close. I say you know click the link below, click the link on the right. I'm going to delay that a minute, and I'm going to turn the table slightly on you. You know those three questions I didn't write them down. But I want you to ask, you know, tell us the questions you've asked everybody and, okay. and try to give us a brief answer and then we'll close. Okay. The three questions that I ask everyone is, what's the best thing about being an entrepreneur? And my answer is, the best thing is, again, it's passion. It's following your passion. It's, it's once upon a time, people talked about lifestyle businesses as if it were fluffy or hobby-like. And I believe that entrepreneurial entrepreneurship is a lifestyle business Amen. in the same way that if you're an actor it's a lifestyle Amen. and so I believe the passion uh, is the best thing being able to do what you really burn for um, the most challenging aspect about entrepreneurship is often uh, something that gets overlooked in education and in support groups is that people are all busy to help you get started but people aren't always there to help you through the, you know, to in a in an everyday fashion to keep your mindset to to connect with other like-minded entrepreneurs can sometimes be a challenge for a solo entrepreneur, and because they lose sight of that there are lots of us solo entrepreneurs sitting in different places, and that's why we need a network like yours and all of these mastermind groups to connect and and be lifelines for each other because it doesn't matter how much your loved one loves you if if they're not if they're not a drive if entrepreneurship is not a driving force within them then they don't get it it's it's a little bit confusing they want to help you but if, at the end of the day if they don't think that things are moving fast enough, the book's not coming out fast enough, or the money's not coming in fast enough, or you're working too hard, 
it's it's hard to explain it, and that's a big challenge, I think, for a lot of us. Yeah. Um, and finally, the words of wisdom uh, for people who might be thinking about becoming an entrepreneur or just in general, tuck, tap into what your passion is, figure out how you serve your world. If you're going to start a business, then definitely don't start something on the fly. Think it through and do something that's going to help the world. So it should have a sustainable element. Either it's environmentally, socially um, responsible in some way. Well, thank you very much. I'm going to give them one tiny little hint. Remember, I created Entrepreneur Tells All. And as a gift to all my fellow authors, it's a $2,000 program just to get my readers to come to TV show house so they come and meet you. I'm actually giving the program totally free. I want the world to become entrepreneurial. We believe, I believe, not in the changing of things, but in making everyone want to become an entrepreneur. I show you how. I opened up a business with uh, $3 and grew it to be multiple million dollars. Uh, it, she was saying some of the neat things of being an entrepreneur. Freedom. Freedom. I can say whatever I want. You may not recognize how powerful that is, but think in your current job, if you said something, aren't you always gauging and second guessing the freedom? I left Syria. I was born in Syria. I left Syria because in 73, they began censoring. Okay. In 76, I was gone. Okay. And I love the country. I love the people. That's where I grew up. But censorship doesn't exist for entrepreneurs. Just <laughs> that matters to you. And so, Laurie, you have been fabulous. Ladies and gentlemen, click the link below. It's going to take you to a very special place. Um, this link will change. Currently, it's to a 99 cents book, but Laurie has a ton of content. So we'll come back and always make sure this link is current and it fits. Thank you so much for staying with us during this interview because I actually went a lot longer than I normally do. So if you're this far in the interview, we both are going to send you a kiss. Thank you. <laughs> we, but I'm so enjoying Lori's company. I hope you will too. Please frequent her channel. Click on the link below. Lori, you have the final words. Well, thank you very much and Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Start your businesses. Start tomorrow. Your, start. <laughs> or today, even better.